it's not about reaching orgasm as a goal, but rather it's riding the wave. So can you speak a little bit about what does it mean to ride the orgasmic wave? Yeah, beautiful. So it's actually, as uh, to sum it up, opposite of what we're doing as a default in our society. Because we only know one type of an orgasm. It's a climatic orgasm, and it comes down to a buildup of, of pleasure in our genitals. Then there is an explosion, a climax, a release of that energy, and it's followed by contraction. Uh, we in Tantra like to call it a peak orgasm because it's sharp, uh, it's short, it usually lasts about from 5 to 15 seconds. Um, and there is so much more than that. But again, this is mainly the orgasm that we see or pornography. And this is what we think the orgasm is. But there is so much more to it. So what I like to talk about is valley orgasm. And really the valley orgasm is an opposite experience. So... When in the peak orgasm, we focus on the genitals, here we really allow the pleasure and that energy and that arrows to move and expand through our whole, whole body. Welcome back to the Highest Self Podcast. My name is Sahara Rose, and this podcast is all about taking spirituality and making it modern, fun, juicy, relatable. I bring on my personal teachers and friends to guide you on this journey of embodying your fullest expression. Because to me, spirituality is not about leaving this human experience and having no pleasure and no sensation and no desires and living as a monk in the Himalayas by yourself, but Rather, it's being integrated in the full human experience. And that includes our emotions. That includes our pleasure. That includes our shadows. It includes the full spectrum of what makes us alive. And personally, I have been on a tantric path. I am on a path of really embodying the sacral chakra's energy, which is that second chakra related to pleasure, creativity, abundance. And for me, tuning into my own sensations and what feels activated within me opens up sparks of ideas and insights that I then share with the world. So the past few years on this tantric journey, I came across this incredible teacher. In fact, she's been on the podcast before. We share more of her story, but I'm just going to like give you a little microdose right now. I went to this workshop of hers in Tulum, and it was this energetic lovemaking workshop. And that name really called to me of like, you know, I'm a very energetic person. And I'm like, how can we bring that into our lovemaking? And this queen literally <laughs> lies down on the ground and has a full body orgasm in front of all of us without touching herself with her clothes fully on. Like there's, there's nothing. She's just lying down, having an orgasm, like in front of 60 people. And I was blown away, first of all, just by her, her courage of, of doing that, but also the fact that it just showed me that it's possible to have an orgasm without anyone touching you, without you touching yourself, just through the waves of energy. And the truth is that I've learned now years later is we are living orgasms. Like if you think about it, we are an orgasm that came to life and sprouted legs and is listening to the High Self podcast now, but we are living orgasms. And if you've ever experienced with psychedelics or with meditation, sometimes when you tap into your true nature, you feel that orgasmic energy and you remember, this is who I am. So it's really like a radio channel that we can tune into at any time. And when we tune into that orgasmic channel, we realize that that energy was always available for us. And this is so profound, whether we are single in relationship or not. You know, for me on my single journey now, I've realized that I don't need anyone else to feel orgasmic. And that releases that pressure of, I need to find someone or I need to make something work and seeking anything outside of yourself. Because the truth is, Every part of your body is orgasmic and you can always tune into an orgasmic state. So this episode is all about your body being an orgasmic wonderland. <laughs> we were like, what should we call her? Like your body's an orgasmic wonderland, duh. <laughs> and we're going to be dropping into the many types of orgasm, but infusing in that, that tantric, sensual approach because 
orgasm is not a goal to get to. And we're going to be speaking about that. That's a very Western model of like, oh, I need to have sex or I need to masturbate to have an orgasm. And it's not the point, but rather looking at orgasm as a state of being, a state of consciousness. And if you look at the koshas, the layers of our energy bodies in, in the Vedic wisdom, our truest body is Ananda Maya Kosha, which means bliss. So actually who you are at your core is bliss. It's just we have forgotten. So with that, without further ado, let's welcome the queen, the founder of Energetic Lovemaking, my personal friend and teacher, Bibi. Welcome on the Highest Self Podcast. So good to have you back. I know. I'm so excited, especially that I have received so many beautiful messages and feedback. Our, after our last episode, we definitely planted seeds for a lot of orgasms. Yes. We've had almost 100,000 people now listen to that episode, and it's one of the top most downloaded episodes on the High Self Podcast. So here we are now, two years later, with so much more experience. And I'm excited to see where this conversation takes us. And we've taken it up a notch of what we talk about on the podcast. So what I love about you is like when we're together, we're like, let's get specific here. Like, what are you doing? In what position was that? Can you share more? So before we get into all that, those juicy details, I would love to ask you, what makes you your highest self? Yeah, what makes me highest self? And this is actually something so related to what you do, really being in my purpose and being of service. And it's just especially alive before this podcast today. I was on some of the group calls with my students and just listening to the breakthroughs and listening to the transformation and witnessing it and knowing that I can be a portal to that uh, just makes me feel alive, makes me feel full fulfilled and this is the best feeling um that that can really that I can experience so yes Pur purpose and pleasure are really mm -hmm. hand in hand you yeah. know because when you step into your purpose you experience so much pleasure but you also remember how important it is and sometimes when we're just like I need to work I need to achieve we forget about pleasure and that's why so many of us don't have pleasure practices we don't prioritize mm -hmm. sex with our partners we don't even prioritize intimacy in general. And we were, we were chatting this weekend about how we often, we schedule time with our friends. We schedule time to go even to the gym. We schedule time for our work, but do we schedule time for intimacy, even with ourselves? And for most of us, even one hour a week, it sounds like too much. And it's like, it's the thing that we want more than anything, but we don't prioritize it. Absolutely. And I know that there's a lot of talk about scheduling time and it became really a trendy thing. And there is also a lot of resistance towards it because people have that idea that it's going to take away the spontaneity of it and it's going to become mechanical. Uh, but something that I also shared with you this weekend is that currently in my couples course, the number one realizations that those couples had that when they were con continuously lacking and they were behind with the home play, they realize that often they don't even have one hour a week for their intimacy. And for them, it was a huge aha moment mm -hmm. because all of them want to have sexually thriving relationships. But if you don't even dedicate one hour a week to that, let's be honest, uh, it's going to be challenging that it's thriving and especially long term. Right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So step one, <laughs> put an hour a week for your self-pleasure and... And I want to just talk about orgasmic energy mm -hmm. and how it's not about reaching orgasm as a goal, but rather it's riding the wave. So can you speak a little bit about what does it mean mm -hmm. to ride the orgasmic wave? Yeah, beautiful. So it's actually, as uh, to sum it up, opposite of what we're doing as a default in our society. Because we only know one type of an orgasm. It's a climatic orgasm and it comes down to a buildup of, of pleasure in our genitals. Then there is an explosion, a climax, release of that energy, and it's followed by contraction. Uh, we in Tantra like to call it a peak orgasm because it's sharp, uh, it's short, it usually lasts about from 5 to 15 seconds. Um, and there is so much more than that. But again, this is mainly the orgasm that we see or pornography. And this is what we think the orgasm is. But there is so much more to it. So what I like to talk about is valley orgasm. And really the valley orgasm is an opposite experience. So 
when in the peak orgasm we focus on the genitals, here we really allow the pleasure and that energy and that eros to move and expand for our all, whole body. So that's number one. The peak orgasm is focused on the buildup of pleasure, right? On movement, action, a lot of doing. Here, it's going to be the opposite. We are actually doing less and being more. And I like to say, instead of chasing and forcing, we are allowing and inviting. That short peak orgasm is, again, short, 5 to 15 seconds. The valley orgasm can be as long as you want, but it's a prolonged um, state. It's a state of being, right? It's you don't have an orgasm. You become orgasmic. It, good valley orgasm is, I would say, at least 20 minutes. And another thing that we do here, instead of... So you're feeling orgasmic energy for 20 whole minutes. You can feel, yes, you feel orgasmic for 20 minutes, half an hour, really as long as you want, because again... But you never climax, correct? I don't climax in the way that I don't climax through genitals. I'm going to come back to that wave because what's important here is that we are not directing the energy downwards and outwards. We are directing the energy inwards and upwards. So I'm going to combine all that information. I think, you know, one of my talents is that I'm very practical and relatable and I make things easy and it's easier for people to apply. So we're going to combine that with pleasure scale. So again, we want to start observing how aroused we are from one to 10. One, we are not aroused at all. 10, we are having an orgasm and we're not going to run from one to 10, right? So normally... The average time of sex in our society is 5.4 minutes. When I just can't believe that. When you told me that, I'm like, the average person is having sex for five minutes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, when it comes to ejaculation, especially, <clears throat> more than half of men ejaculate within less than two minutes. So Men, come on. <laughs> we need 20 minutes just to warm up. No, 35 minutes, 35 according to, to real latest. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. So we kind of run, we sprint from one to 10, yeah. right? So there's few consequences of that if we sprint. First of all, there is not enough time for us to fully relax. So there is not enough time to create space for this energy to expand. There is not enough time to build up more of that energy and to start circulating that, right? There's not enough time for this relaxation, non-doing, surrender, invitation. There's this grasping, chasing, forcing, right? And uh, when we start to ride that wave, we can bring ourselves to a seven and then slow down a little bit and surf that seven, breathe into that seven, observe where in the body that seven. Okay, so what does a seven feel like exactly? Because to me, and I'd like to just be mm -hmm. vulnerable on here, it's like when you feel an orgasm coming, it's like you are kind of focused on that energy because mm -hmm. you you, you want to have an orgasm. So what is it like to yeah. just stay at the seven? So let me, maybe it will be easier enough to explain a little bit how it feels to be at a free, okay? Free versus nine. How about that? So a nine is imagine that the fire is burning. You put a lot of wood. The fire is burning. There's a lot of heat and it's quite overwhelming. You can't really be fully present with so much heat, right? With a free... There is less wood in that fire. The fire is lower. The temp the, it's, it's less So it's heating. three like kissing. Three can be kissing, but that's what also is interesting here, I want to say. So let's say you can be kissing and you focus all your awareness to that point of touch. So you kind of really meditate on your lips, right? So... Not thinking about what's coming next. Oh, are we going to penetrate or not? You're fully enjoying that sensation in your lips. And then you breathe into it and you sound into it. So you can kind of, um, I want to say, um, you can kind of intensify that experience through breath, through sound. So 
this feels that energy starts to expand and it's even more delicious and it expands to the bigger area of your body and you're becoming even more present. So on, we can use the breath and sound and the movement to help us ride that wave. Mm. So mm. one thing, because I took one of your, your classes and you mentioned using the breath and the sound and mm -hmm. I was like, well, isn't it weird <laughs> if I'm like kissing someone, I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know? So it's like, how do we bring in like sound without the two spiritual you know what I mean <laughs> yeah but and you I'm sure you you also teach this in the goddess collective but uh, our throat and our womb and those yeah. two centers the sex center and uh, and our throat are two of the centers that historically has been most suppressed for women right so actually sounding is really huge so on one hand it really changes the game, okay? Because the vocal cords are connected to our vagus nerve. So we're literally tuning in the vagus nerve. We are relaxing, but we are also letting go. And we're building that energy up. And we're also creating vibration. So that allows that energy to be distributed all over the body. And I want to say the following. At the beginning, it might sound a little awkward, okay? Like it, what kind of sounds are you talking here? <laughs> it can be, ah, uh, just a simple sigh. It can be, mmm, oh, mmm. Okay, these are hot. I like these sounds. Ah, uh, but what's so beautiful about it, Sahara, is that once you truly let yourself go, once you truly allow this energy to move and you go into those orgasmic state, your critical mind, which is there telling you that you are sounding weird and that you're going to be judged for that, is quiet. It's not online and it all stops to really be relevant. And you're just allowing that energy to move through you and that sound will come naturally. You're not going to even be thinking if you're doing ah or oh, it will just move through you. And the more energy will be moving through you, the more sound there will be and vice versa because it's a two-way street. Yes. Yeah. On the topic of sound, you know, I think a lot of us as teenagers, when we started, you know, mm -hmm. self-pleasuring, you didn't want your parents to know. So Absolutely. you taught yourself how to be quiet because that would be so embarrassing, right? So we have learned. And also a lot of us have roommates, live in apartments, things like that. Mm -hmm. So we've trained ourselves to be silent in this thing that, or to make sounds in a performative way based Absolutely. on porn, which is not actually what the sounds that they would want to make. Absolutely. And I always say that, that we kind of almost lost this ability to have that natural sound of pleasure because on one hand it is suppressed and even as a child, it was uncomfortable to catch your parents having sex, right? Or just the idea of that. So uh, we're suppressing something that is natural, uh, part of our natural expression. So what happens then? It comes out on the opposite end as perverse. And then we have pornography with all the performative pleasure and fake sounds. And I was guilty of that myself. And where is this natural way of sounding for your pleasure? We almost lost that ability. And, and I think it's like informing your partner, you know, of like the way that this would be helpful for them, that you can actually feel more when you make mm. sounds because you're immersed in the experience and using all of your senses. And the more of our senses that we bring online, the more full body it becomes. Absolutely. And to me, sound is also a nonverbal communication as well, because if someone is touching you or you're completely silent, what, the, what are you communicating? You're communicating, you're not feeling much. And then what happens is that often our partners will go into uh, a more intense stimulation because they think we're not feeling. Instead, if someone is touching you, uh, and you're communicating with your breath, then it's so much more easy to start dancing together as partners. Totally, because then you know that person is enjoying this. Mm -hmm. If not, you're like, okay, did they not like this? Did they like this? And then you're like trying different things. Absolutely. But then people, yeah, they're they're not sharing because of whatever shame. So, okay. So I'm going to add two more things, juicy things. Okay. Actually. Yes. Because we want to continue yeah. this wave. One we'll go through thing, all the numbers. We <laughs> actually can have soundgasms or voicegasms. So I recommend if you want to guys uh, experiment with that, bring yourself to an arousal level of an eight, 
pause the stimulation and start sounding really loud and observe what happens. And what I am also playing with, since I was having a couple of dates with a lover over Zoom, who was far away on the other side of the planet, I can actually also orgasm to someone uh, else orgasming, just hearing them. I can orgasm to the sound of the orgasm. It's so hot. It's so powerful. So there is so much we can do here with the sound. So I really encourage everyone. And the more resistant you are, the more of a breakthrough there will be on the other side. I love that. Okay. So a three could be just feeling the sensation on your lips, mm -hmm. starting to feel like Neck. putting the, the fire in the embers. Mm -hmm. So what does that, you said around a six or eight is where you would pause? So to be honest, again, you, once you get into a state of flow, uh, you're kind of going to intuitively move through it rather than exactly giving it a numbers. But I would say you want to start observing. For men, there is, it's very clear. It's called a point of no return. For us, we don't really have that point. We're more multi-orgasmic. But just to a point where you can easily slow down. So where you're getting to a point, Sahara, you mentioned that you really don't want to slow down and that slowing down feels like a burden, then maybe you went too far. So that would be like a nine. Nine for some. So there's also an interesting part to it. That the more you practice that, that point will move higher. So probably when some people start, it might be at a seven, but the more you practice this, you will be able to hold more and more pleasure in your body without a needing to release, without a needing to climax. So you start with a seven, but a few months in into this practice, you might realize that it's actually an eight or a nine. Yeah. And that's like sexual maturity you know, to be able to hold and be in turn on energy without needing to have a climax. And I feel like a lot of times we are conditioned again, the first times that we had sex is like, we just stay like that. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like, you know, we've, we've shared different, <laughs> different stories of things, which I won't get into, but I think it's important for us to know. It's like, you can be in a state of turn on and, you know, and really into each other and it not lead to sex. And that still be enough. It's just our Western model thinks like, oh, if you guys are kissing and making out, like it, it ha you have to come at the end. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I shared many times, I don't think we talked about this uh, on the last episode, but what I really love are the breastgasmic dates. Oh, yes. Let's get into <laughs> that. <laughs> and I love to play with Eros. I am a sensual person. But I not necessarily want to have a penetration with every guy I meet. And so there is this, and I feel there is so much awkwardness in this realm, in our society. And I get asked this question so often. So I actually, how do I go about that? I communicate this from the very beginning. And it's an invitation. So if I'm vibing with someone, I would ask, hey, um, I feel attracted uh, I feel tingling in my body and I would like to play with that. And would you be open for a sensual breastgasmic date where oh, I guide really? you through a breast massage where we engage sensually, maybe energetically, but I would keep it within the boundaries of staying in our, in our underwear and, and, uh, and um, honoring that boundary. Are you open for that? So... That is from the very beginning, very clear. Yes. So then there's no irkiness of, is this leading to something else? Absolutely. Is this foreplay? It's like, no, this is the meal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And at the beginning, everyone looks at me is like, wow, really? And so many of my clients put this into practice and the feedback that I get is absolutely amazing. I also teach at a lot of festivals and this tool has been so beautiful. So many women came to me saying, okay, we met someone at a three day festival. We're not necessarily ready to penetrate. And we invited uh, those partners for brisgasmic dates. And it was so beautiful. And usually, actually, the partners say, yes, I know that there is idea that you're going to be laughed at or maybe judged for this, but it's really very rarely the case because especially men, they very, not very often they hear a woman who knows what she wants, who is actually being very clear about her desires and they're curious, they're open. So really, really play with that. 
I love that so much because people would think, oh, BB, you're a Tantra teacher. You must like have all this crazy sex all the time. And I even asked you that and you're like, no, most of the time, like 99% of the time, there's no penetration involved because it's your temple and it really is so intimate. And so there are other ways that you can play with sexual and sensual energy that are actually not sex at all. Absolutely. And uh, first of all, I am a sensual energetic blueprint I'm not a sexual blueprint. So I like penetration, but uh, I get even more lit up uh, if there is a slow sensual teasing and I can go for hours like that. Uh, So there is the sensual play. There is the energetic play, right? Without penetration, sometimes even without touch. And there is, of course, BDSM and kink. And And we're going to get into sensual doming and the doming you did at (laughs) Envision Festival. We're going to get into all that. But I want to go through all the different types of orgasm Mm -hmm. because your entire body is capable of Mm -hmm. being orgasmic. Yes. You know, your, your wrist can be orgasmic, your ear can be orgasmic. And then of course your outer labia, inner labia, Mm -hmm. G spot, A spot, Mm -hmm. cervix, perineum, the list goes on. So let's talk about that of all the different types of orgasm there. So you started with, with breast and, and let's go into that a little bit more, how we can have breast gasms. Yeah. So I'm first even going to make, take a step back and I'm going to divide into two types. So I would say physical orgasms would be one category and energetic orgasms would be another category. So breasts will come to the physical, right? Because we are starting with the breasts. So the nipples, Actually, there was a research done, so now it's not a spiritual (laughs) woo-woo. The nipples are connected, and when we stimulate the nipples, the same part of the brain lights up than when we are actually having G-spot orgasm or clitorial orgasm. So research confirms that we can have breastgasms. So... I teach a lot of uh, breast massage. So no, we're not going to go straight to the nipples. Really massage the whole breasts, warm them up. You always want to start with the least erogenous zone. So from the outside of the breasts, slowly coming closer to the nipples. And really this whole area is sensitive. So playing with the whole area. And even just massaging your heart. Absolutely. You know, and opening your heart in this way and tapping your heart because we all hold so much, so many layers and being guarded that for me, I just like touch my heart and really open that up and feel so much love for myself. Why don't I share three of my favorite moves when it comes to breast massage? And I love you just inspired me because one of my favorite moves, I call it raindrops. So literally it's a little bit of tapping literally, but when you're really aroused, that's going to feel so delicious. And I tap all over the breasts and especially focusing on the area of the heart. And to me, this is actually the number one gateway to heartgasms. And my lovers learn that pretty quickly and they tap or when I have a Zoom date, they tell me to tap my heart and I almost immediately go into heartgasm. So that would be one, the raindrops. Another one that I really like is an infinity. And you can do this with a feather, you can do this with your uh, fingertips or with the entire hand and the coconut oil. But really, uh, where I love this move is because it just reminds me of the infinite potential of our breasts. You know, there is a double meaning to this. And another one that I really, really like is what I call palm dust. And I have really, really sensitive nipples. So I am open for squeezing, but really maybe 20 minutes into the stimulation. But what I really like is teasing. And again, I'm an energetic, sensual type. So what I like to say is when this is your nipple, you kind of hoover your palm around the nipples and tease, and I call it palm dust. So these are some of mine. There's many more, but you know, I hope. uh, And when we tease, we actually allow our bodies to reach the totality of the turn on, which is going to make, even if you have sex or meditation, so much better. But most of us are preemptively going into it that we're not at our full blossom. You know, it's like a rose and it's like partially starting to bud, but like not really. And then like tearing it off. It's like, it never reached its, its full, full full potential. And I think that so many of us, we feel pressured because Mm -hmm men tend to just be faster. They don't need as much stimulation. And then we feel guilty about taking too much time and, you know, being annoying. And we feel like they're not going to be patient with us. So we like force ourselves to just get into it. And that's why so many women need like lots of lube and, you know, or even have pain with, with penetration. So 
doing these things is going to allow you and your partner to have better sex for both of you when you're able to really tease yourself and make your body want it and call it in. Exactly. I like to say you create a yearning, right? And there is even a funny saying uh, or a little anecdote that I can say that I want to share here uh, makes people laugh. And and actually, it's a beautiful metaphor because there's, um, there is a story you can say that... Uh, we want to worship a woman's body to a point that she's begging for penetration and she should actually beg three times before we enter her. I love that. <laughs> That's really funny because in Persian weddings, the man has to ask the woman three times if he wants to get married and she has to say no, no. And the third time she says yes. So there's something to that asking of three times. I like yeah. that. I yeah. like that. And really, so, you know, this is this is where we are really, really open. And, and that's hot. Of that's like, hot. oh, I want it. It's like, nope, you can't have it. It's like, oh, I want it. Like that is like, then you're going to be so ready for it. Exactly. That's where we're going to touch on kink in a second, right? Mm. Okay. We so we've got the breast gasms. What else? Well, we, we have some of the obvious orgasms. So we have the orgasm of the, actually those are on the outside, maybe a little less obvious. Uh, apart from the clitoral orgasm, so I'm going to skip that because usually there's a lot of conversation about that one. But I want to talk a little bit about the orgasm of the entrance of the vagina. There is so many pleasure nerves. So I definitely can feel like a separate orgasm there. And there is also a U-spot. So this is literally our pee hole that has skin glands on the left and right side of the pee hole. And it's actually also therefore called U-spot because it can be or orgasmic as well. I definitely experience orgasms that are really, really laser focused on that spot. Wow. So even on the outside, we can have so many different types of orgasmic experiences. Then while when we venture inside of our vagina, we of course can have G-spot and an A-spot and a cervical orgasm. We also can have anal orgasms. So this would be all kind of typical physical orgasms. Now, there are also some orgasms that will be kind of on the verge of, I would say, physical and energetic. So uh, I experience an eargasm or a neckgasm. And then there are also all type of energetic orgasms from that full body orgasm, energy orgasm, valley orgasm, but also a sadgasm or a lovegasm or an angergasm. And to be honest with you, I don't even think we can kind of um, give a complete list because there are infinite possibilities. I think if you just take enough time with any part of your body, it will become orgasmic. Absolutely. It's just like you're giving it that love and attention. And I know like inside your elbows and yes. knees or are, are really just like anywhere that's sensitive in your body, mm -hmm. even just like really gently touching and stroking your arms yes. with the tips of your fingers up and down, it feels orgasmic. And I love that you mentioned that because yes, we have all these non-genital erogenous zones that we we kind of know it's maybe not something you heard for the first time, but I really going to ask everyone who is listening to pause and observe and reflect. Are you spending time uh, stimulating those zones? And is this our scalp or our ear, neck, the inside of the wrist, the inside of the elbow, um, our hips, the inside of the knee, our uh, feet, our ankles. And actually research shows that there is at least 12% of women that can have orgasms just from stimulating those areas alone. You were going to say ankles. I was like, whoa, yes. <laughs> ankle gasms. Yeah, just, ankle gasms. Yeah, I mean, some people are into feet stuff. Maybe that's why. That's yeah, why. But, but those are really... But, and foot massages can feel orgasmic too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And to mix and match them that you could be having, you know, sex or foreplay or something, but then touch the back of their knees or mm. inside their elbows. And it's it's like, I feel like we, the moment it becomes sexual, we're so focused on genitals. And it's like sometimes bringing it to another area that's maybe not used to being touched. It mm -hmm. like, it, it creates this new feeling. Absolutely. And trust me, those are really, really, really delicious. And when it comes to a breast gasmic dates, um, so I often get asked, okay, uh, your partner is mostly men in this case. I also have done uh, breast gasmic with women, uh, breastgasmic dates, but 
they gift me with this kind of stimulation and I often gift them with the stimulation of the neck and the ears area. And I have given so many neckgasms and eargasms and therefore I know it really, really works. Uh, but just again, building up errors and excitement and anticipation and really slowing down and focusing on that specific area can be so delicious. So this is a natural segue into our exploration at Envision Festival where I was DJing and you were there. It was so much fun. So we were with our friend and you were telling me, you were like, I just went to this Tantra meets BDSM retreat mm -hmm. and I've channeled this new modality called <laughs> sensual doming. I'm like, tell me everything. Yeah. And you, you taught me it. And then I was doing it on our friend Mickey and we were all like practicing and you're giving us feedback. And it was so cool because, you know, for many of us, like the BD, like a lot of us who listen to this podcast, mm -hmm. we're spiritual and yeah. we're probably sensual energetic blueprint, which yeah, is, which is maybe. my own. And if, and if you're not sure, I'll link the podcast mm -hmm. below that we did with Miss Jaya, who created the erotic blueprint archetypes, mm -hmm. but sensual is like, you, you need, you love to listen to the music and the candles and the sensation and take your time and feel the energy. Well, and then actually energy is more like, it's not even just about the sensation, but it's more about just the energy, the energy. And, the, and the thought of it. Even anticipation. Anticipation. Yeah. She gave this really amazing analogy mm -hmm. of how you would eat a cake mm -hmm. says your erotic blueprint. Mm -hmm. So she said, let's say there was like this delicious chocolate, vegan, gluten-free <laughs> keto cake <laughs> in front of Erwan. you, <laughs> Erwan made. And how would you, what would attract you the most about it? Would it be just the thought of knowing that you had this cake waiting at home in your kitchen? You're just thinking about, oh, I can't wait to go home and eat that cake. Oh, that's <laughs> so that's the energetic. Mm -hmm. Or is it, you open up that cake, you, you put on perfect music, some masego, you light your candles, you dim your lights, you start gently touching it your whole body. Ceremony it was ceremony. Cake. That's also me. And then you, yeah. you just slowly put that cake in your mm -hmm. mouth and you swirl it around your mm -hmm. mouth and you're feeling it and mm -hmm. it just tastes so good and so rich. Mm -hmm. And you're like, mm, this cake is just so delicious. <laughs> That's me. That's the sensual. Yeah. Or are you like, I'm going to eat this cake. Mm, put it in my mouth. Give me that cake. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> That's the sexual. Yes. Or are you like, hey, you're not allowed to eat this cake until I tell you you can eat this cake. <laughs> 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 you better be a good girl if you want to eat that cake. Or it. like, you can eat that cake, but you can only use your mouth and mm -hmm. you can't use your hands. Mm -hmm. Let's see how you can do it. That's the love cake. This. <laughs> I love this analogy. So, so good. So that basic, or is it just like, it just depends your mood. And then that's mm. the, the shape shifter. So I feel like that, that basically describes the erotic blueprints right there. You don't even need to do the quiz. Yeah. But for a lot of us who listen to this podcast, I find it's sensual and energetic mm -hmm. mostly. And then a lot of kink, like we all watch 50 shades of gray and it's like dark and painful. And we're like, I don't want pain. Like, I don't want to be tortured. Mm -hmm. But there's something really hot about like that polarity that happens with the dom and the sub uh -huh. of like letting yourself surrender and be ravished. And that's that deep feminine yearning of just like letting mm -hmm. yourself be like adored and ravished and someone just want you so badly. Yeah, they, they cannot resist. Yes. yes. And I feel like that's the core feminine desire and the core masculine desire is to penetrate. Mm -hmm. And that's where these kink polarities can come in. So what you've created and you're, and you're like really developing right now with sensual dom is infusing the kink mm -hmm. dynamics, power dynamics, but not painful. Instead, make it sensual and soft. So can you share a little bit yeah. about how to work with this? Yeah. So I want to just say that I also had my judgment around BDSM and kink. And um, I, even when I was filling up the test initially uh, of the erotic blueprints, I scored very low on kink because to be honest with you, I realized I actually never really experienced it in a conscious container. So I was like, I'm saying no to those things, but I never really tried them. It's like someone slaps your ass out of nowhere. You're like, ow. <laughs> exactly. you know? But once, but there was something and uh, a lover planted a seed 
seed and there was a curiosity and I'm always yes for exploration. And the Tantra meets BDSM was really even more inviting for me. And again, my mind was blown away uh, by the depth of it, uh, by the variety of it. And by the fact, what I didn't realize really is that the kinky blueprint is the one that can, let's say, play or combine with all the other blueprints in an easiest way. Uh, because you can play kinky and energetic and kinky and sensual. So there is, again, such a beautiful way to, to create a variety of experiences. Now, I, you know, I'm just at the beginning of my DOM journey, but <laughs> DOM and SAB and BDSM journey. But because I am sensual and energetic, that combination of kinky with sensual and energetic felt so natural, felt so home that it almost, you know, that I felt like I've, you know, it's been in me forever. Uh, and what I love about that is that kinky can be very subtle. So imagine that I'm just gonna uh, blindfold you and I, or I might just tie up your hands uh, so you, we're going to do sense deprivation, right? So you cannot see and you cannot move. And then I'm going to start sensually tease you with a feather. So the same kind of stimulation will be so much more intense because you're focusing uh, all your senses on, on that feather touch. And because the fact that in a way you cannot move, but there is pleasure and you want to might act on it, makes it even hotter. So there doesn't necessarily have to be a lot of pain or it doesn't have to be aggressive. I love to play with the feather. And in, in this game, this is exactly what I was doing. I am teasing the neck and the ears. And I think I actually have been able to give uh, partners or playmates, let's say, call it like that, more of the eargasms and the neckgasms when I have this kink element that I add on top of that. Is it with blindfolding someone or telling them they cannot move or lie down and then I start to tease them. And I feel that, as you mentioned, there is, I actually want to be teaching this to especially more men yes. because so many women crave that. And I already played with this idea. I actually, I have a permission to share this story. I dumped someone's wife on this retreat and she was not into kink. Her husband was, and she was struggling. And I kind of saw her sensual blueprint coming online. And I asked, would you be open to me doming you sensually? And we went into a two hour play and she had all the types of orgasms that we mentioned here from a love gasm, breast gasm, ear gasm, neck gasm. She actually had her first energy orgasm in that session and the energy is moving till today. I just got a message from them a few days ago. And you know, that combination unlocked something. And I feel like there's this deep yearning for women to be on one hand dominated, but in a conscious way, right? And then touched sensually because so many of us are sensual uh, blueprints. Yeah. It's that perfect combination of like wanting to be, yeah, not even dominated, but just like Take. desired. Desire. Yeah. Taken, mm -hmm. ravished, chosen, like mm -hmm. someone's like full attention is on you, but not to like hurt you, Absolutely. not to make you like tormented and tied up and like whipped until you're crying. Like that doesn't, that's the part that does not sound fun at all, yeah. but like to just touch you gently and yeah. to open your heart and to connect with you. But like, they need to do that. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's the both. Whereas sometimes going into sensual, it's like, can be a little of a sleepy energy mm -hmm. at times, you know, <laughs> of like you're cuddling and you're touching, but you're like kind of falling asleep and yeah. this, which is great in its own way. Mm -hmm. But this is like a boom, like I need you, but like, I just want you to open up like the goddess that you are. Absolutely. And I think, you know, some of the misunderstandings around BDSM, DOM is actually in service of the yes. self, right? So once we understand that dynamic and DOM acts from a place of love and from the heart. So if they are, you know, spanking someone is because the sub asks for it, right? But again, they are in the service of sub. I find this dynamic um, such a beautiful um, format 
of embodying that feminine and masculine within all of us. Because I feel with all the Me Too movement and just the fact that we women are living so much more in our masculine and men are not, and there's just this whole polarity thing be, is becoming increasingly challenging. Uh, either way, however we configure it. And these tools give us really... Uh, the practical ways of dropping deeper into those polarities. And I really yes. love that. And we can do it on men as well, yeah. you know, because, and it could be a really good entrance for men to get into sensuality Absolutely. because a lot of men tend to be sexual archetype, yep. you know, because, because that's what we often see. That's what we mostly see in yes. pornography. So mm -hmm. yes, this is something most familiar, right? They're yeah. like, okay, I want it go. Mm -hmm. And so this can really teach them how we want to be touched, Yes, you know, and allow them to feel the subtleties of, mm -hmm. you know, you showed me with the sensual doming, essentially what you did was like, you kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, and we were like, we were like outside guys. It wasn't like in a bedroom or we had our full clothes on. Like we can get that. Yeah. We're not that kinky, you know, but it, it showed the playfulness of it, of like, you sort of like held me mm -hmm. and then you were just like touching my neck really slowly. And then I was also asking you for numbers. Yes. And I love this combination. So I actually used it a couple of times, I'll be honest, on the Envision Festival. Mm, <laughs> maybe you were practicing. I <laughs> you cheated on me. Okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> because again, I find I want to play with arrows and I don't want to be, you know, having a penetration with every person. I'm yeah, you're not festival. trying to get those energetic cords but up in your business. I am not <laughs> drinking alcohol. I'm, I, uh, you know, what nourishes and my, my body and lights me up is playing with arrows. And again, this can get very, very awkward. So that dynamic, and this is another element that I love about the BDSM, the clarity communication and boundaries. Best communication I've ever seen Best. is actually in the kink and the polyamory community. Yeah. Yes. Wow. In inspiring. Inspiring. Yeah. Exactly. So I've done this couple of evenings <clears throat> and the festival was like, would you be open to play? And I found so, it. So take us back. You're on the dance floor, you're vibing with this guy, and then you're like, would you be open to play? Uh -huh. No. So we were actually already on the dance floor. Uh, there was a bit of touch and there was a little bit of playing. So it didn't come out of nowhere. We were already sensually playing on the dance floor. And then I... I actually, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, transparent and I'm clear and vocalize and I vocalized my desires uh, very clearly. And I was like, yeah, I'm actually exploring this uh, recently. This is, uh, I've been fascinated by um, the dominance dynamic and uh, I, I would you be open to play? And I will be playing with some of your non-erogenous zones and asking you for numbers. And we take it from there. And actually, we had energetic orgasms with different people several times. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you yeah. tell him, look, so they came to we're going to touch non-erogenous zones. Doing that. First of all, I just want to like like really honor your boldness of that, of like, hey guy, we're going to touch some Mirages Jones. I'm going to give you some numbers. Are you in or are you out? And like, that is some bad bitch energy right there. I'm just like, this is what's happening. And, and I'm sure people are like, I've never heard of this before. I'm in. Yeah. So then- so but you were just very subtle and elegant. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so yes. like how, like, yeah. how do you bring so, this up? Because I feel like in my head, I'm just like, I don't even know how I would okay. ever say that. So <laughs> we were lying on the beach, literally moon bathing. Okay. And we started with breathing together. There was a little bit of breathing, a little bit of a conversation, what we were open for or not. And then we, I just started touching him very, very slowly. And it was the arms and the neck and then going down the belly and up. I didn't even go anywhere near the genitals. And I asked him to breathe and sound. And I would ask, hey, how does that feel? What number are you at? And it started with a two and then it went to a four. And 20 minutes in, we were sounding a little bit more. And when I also hear the sound of the partner, I am also becoming aroused again. To me, I'm an energetic type. So just from that sound of the arousal and pleasure, I'm getting off of that as well. So we both started breathing and sounding louder. 
And yeah, he was actually able to go to a tent for the first time in his life. And funny that I'm bringing this gentleman up, but he literally wrote me a message a few days ago saying that this experience has changed his life. He was actually uh, struggling with a porn addiction uh, for many years and had very destructive patterns when it comes to sexuality. And when he met me, he also heard me in a workshop. He was, you know, blown away and he was super curious and open. And he said that since this, this was in February, since then he has been reading, but most importantly, he has been practicing. He moved to, he maybe ejaculates once a month. He's now into slow lovemaking. And he says, I, it's been life changing. And I want to thank you and I'm on this new path. So how beautiful and powerful is that? And that's so beautiful to remind us that this is healing work. It's not just about pleasure for the sake of pleasure, but it's pleasure as a path of healing that Mm -hmm. this allowed him to literally change the trajectory of his life, to be able to meet his partners in deeper ways, to heal from a porn addiction, to find just the subtleties within himself, which is going to make him tune into more of his intuition and his creativity that Mm -hmm. there's, it's, it's like, yes, it's fun. It's juicy, but like, this is the most potent work I believe that we can do here on humanity because we're so gross in everything. We're so over the top. We're Mm -hmm. so like hard and fast and more and quick and like capitalistic. Mm -hmm. And I feel that this slow sex, you know, slow orgasm, really resensitizing your body is a reclamation that we have everything that we need inside of ourselves. Absolutely. And on top of everything, he's already sharing with all his male friends. Great. So then we need that (laughs) domino effect, but yes, absolutely. And I think we live in this world of overstimulation. And sometimes I live in Tulum and you go to a restaurant, not only the music is banging so loud that you cannot even hear what other people are saying, the lights are on and people are drinking alcohol on smoking and then they still are, you know, want to buy drugs. And where is enough enough? There is this more, more, more of everything to a point that, you know, everyone is so numb that there is no end to that overstimulation and coming back and slowing down. And I know for some of you at the beginning, it might be a period of, um, let's say it might be dull. It might be dull. It might be boring. Uh, and I always like to give an example of driving a car. You never drive from reverse straight to forward. There's a neutral in between. And that neutral is that's where people run away because it seems boring. Nothing is happening. I'm not feeling anything. That's not for me. Stay there. Stay there because every time you're going to feel a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and it's going to start building up. It reminds me of when you go into nature Mm -hmm. or a retreat. You know, at first you're like, angsty, like I need to check my phone. Like I probably have emails. You're yeah. still in that wired state that almost feels normal when you're, mm-hmm. when you're in a city. Cause everyone's there. Right. And then after two days, you stop wanting to check your phone. And after four days, you're breathing deeper. And then after a week, you don't even want to go back to the phone. You know, you're in a totally different frequency. And this is what happens when you reorient and re mm-hmm. reprogram your body for subtleties. You don't want the vibrator anymore. You don't want the fast food sex anymore. You don't want the porn. You don't want these things because you're having a candlelit dinner under the moonlight. Yeah. And that is so much more gratifying. Yeah. And you know, this is interesting that we, uh, we, you mentioned the vibrator and I know because I also listen to other episodes of your podcast and I love that you bring a variety of teachers and their different opinions and different ways of looking at things and listeners, I always encourage you to take what you listen, what you heard, practice and see what resonates with you. But with the vibrators and I'm never going to say and I will tell anyone what to do or not to do. This is your choice. However, during my course, I recommend that women don't use a vibrators for 12 weeks. And then I say, after the course ends, do whatever you want. I would say 90% of women uh, throw away the vibrators. And I don't think I had one person throughout the history of my course that said, you know what? Nah, I'm going back to my vibrator. Not one. Uh, so this just shows me that when we tune into those more subtle sensations, they, they, they will become more and more juicy and deeper and there is potential for everyone. Yeah. I agree with you. And, you know, for me, it's like anything that's man-made is not, it's not natural. It's not natural to our bodies and we're getting our bodies used to something that's like, it's not human, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's then, how I see this as well. Yeah. So then it's like, 
And ultimately for me, like sex is about the connection. It's not about the orgasm. And when you're using a vibrator, you're patterning yourself to equate sex yeah. with an orgasm. And, and you're kind of turning yourself into a, a male orgasm of like yeah. fast, quick, hard, and then you need a higher setting and a higher <laughs> setting and a higher setting. And again, I, I believe that it's important. So many women, like, you know, 50% of women aren't even having orgasms through mm. sex. And I believe orgasms are our birthright and like whatever helps you get there, get there. And there's like no orgasm shaming in this building. Yeah. And do we want to go deeper? Yeah. You know, do we want to go deeper into feeling? Because it's not that some of us are like wired to be more subtle or not. We we all are. We're all humans. It's just if you're used to being on your phone all the time, yeah. you're going to be used to being on your phone all the time. If you're used to being on, you know, people calling you and being, it's like your nervous system is just going to orient to whatever you get your nervous yeah. system used to. And I feel like our sexuality is the same way. And it takes an unwinding, you know, it's Absolutely. like when you are used to, okay, when I'm stressed out, I have an orgasm. Yeah. It, I was it, there for many years. Right. And it's like, then that becomes your addiction. It becomes your patterning mm -hmm. that then you are going to have those withdrawals at yeah. first, you know, and, but then over time you can actually build new neuro pathways to then have orgasmic experiences through things that actually even have nothing to do mm -hmm. with your yoni. And, and that's really what we're speaking about, which is just going to make you be more intuitive to all subtle sensations out yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I actually, I want to bring um, a definition of an orgasm that I particularly resonate with. And it's with a, the, this definition comes from Leila Martin, with whom I studied. And she talks about orgasm. She divides it into three parts. Number one is pleasure. So we're going to build pleasure, but not necessarily in our genitals, right? It can be a breast massage or it can be that neck massage. When we relax into it, this pleasure starts to expand and it starts to move. So there is this movement and expansion and that pleasure combined with the movement and expansion then results in a mind shift. And usually it will be a state of surrender and not necessarily surrendering to a partner, but just surrendering to what is, surrendering to pleasure, surrendering to the present moment. And if you look into the definition, it can be with touch or without touch, it can be any part of our body, it can be with or without penetration, with or without a partner. And there's just, you know, so much depth in this definition. And it's so beautiful to see also women who often um, criticize themselves or are harsh towards themselves thinking that they never have an orgasm. But we actually, especially for us women, uh, there is so much depth into our orgasmic experiences. And then they realize, well, I actually, experience orgasm this way and it's just so beautiful to see while we widen that definition uh, we also realize that so many more of us are more orgasmic and how uh, a big variety of experiences can bring us to those states yes and even before we get there the foreplay that we have with ourselves so for mm -hmm. me i notice if i dance before I'm going to be so much more open and juicy and for even for myself yeah. that like if I you know, in the morning I do yoga. And if I just go into doing my own movement and embodiment practice of moving my hips and letting myself dance and being on the floor and crawling, naturally that turn on energy comes on. And so some of us, we, we need to turn ourselves on. We need to dance for ourselves. We mm. need to, it's not about a performance for someone else. That's why I love going to pole classes, floor, floor classes, mm -hmm. twerking, because then I just feel so turned on by myself. Absolutely. And then that can lead to self-pleasure practice, or you just ride that orgasmic wave for the rest of your day. I hold to that. And yes, and for so many, you know, it's just this dropping into the body that you want to practice, and especially before self-pleasure practice. Right. So for someone, it may be uh, breath work, but for so many, it's movement and dance. And this is also one of my favorite ways. And yes. I definitely dance in front of the mirror for mm. myself. Mm. <laughs> Love. So you also have these pleasure practices that I've been doing that are amazing. Mm. And what I love about them is you guide us 
through audio, through a practice. So sometimes it's like, it's like a yoga class. Mm -hmm. If you're just doing yoga alone on your mat, you might get distracted. You might check your phone, you might leave. But if you're watching a yoga class on video, Mm -hmm. you're going to do the whole class. And you've created these four pleasure practices that you're actually guiding us through them. And it's called your Ladders of Bliss program, which you're going to be offering us a special (laughs) one-on-one session for everyone that joins. And they can find that link in the show notes. So can you share with us a little bit about the pleasure practices that you share? Yeah. So actually I, in the pandemic, especially, uh, I didn't have a lover or a partner and sometimes I was also lazy. I'm also a human being. Right. And I was like, I wish I had a guidance for a self-pleasure practice, uh, as I do for meditation. When I'm lazy, I press play and just follow along, uh, even some of your meditations. Right. But why don't I really have that for self-pleasure practice or when there are, they are quite clinical and there's usually no music. And I always like to create something that I myself wanted to have. Yeah, and your music is always <laughs> the best. <laughs> I have musicians write music for all the most of those uh, journeys. And the first one was actually called Ladder to Bliss. And then it sparked the whole journey because you'd be surprised. Most people, actually so many people don't even have any self-pleasure practice because either from because of conditioning and the religious beliefs, et cetera, et cetera, uh, they just didn't think it's something uh, worth exploring. Or if most people, when they have, it's short, it's shallow, it's this kind of sneeze and snooze type of an experience. (laughs) And I believe this is so powerful to guide people through this high vibration masturbation process. So I have all kind of um, journeys, starting with honoring your whole body. Uh, one is focused on uh, breast orgasms. Another one is with the wand. Another is with the jade egg. Another one is focused on the moving energy and energetic orgasms and valley orgasm. Another one is riding the waves of pleasure. And it's like a whole journey. So I always say it's from zero to hero journey. I'm not going to just throw people into the deep waters straight away. Way, especially that there is a lot of shame and limiting beliefs. So we do it very gently, elegantly, in a safe way. Uh, and yeah, of course, of, in the course, of course, we have life components, but I wanted to give women the tool that in their own time, in their own bedroom, they can really go with fully in. And so many women share with me that those and meditations are almost like mini ayahuasca journeys. <laughs> and because there's breath, there's moving of sexual energy and they really take you places. And yeah, so that is how the whole course came to life, which is called Ladder to Bliss. And what I love about it is, you know, sometimes you're just like hanging out in bed, it's a weekend and it's like, you're either going to be on your phone and scrolling and an hour is going to go by and exactly. you didn't get anything from it. Or I can just press play, mm-hmm. put, put on this beautiful meditation and practice. And it, instantly drops me in because I'm not going to grab my phone in the middle mm-hmm. of it. And then I've, I've just entered a ceremonial space and I didn't need mm-hmm. to plan it or do anything. I'm literally just pushing play like in a guided meditation. Yeah. And you guide us through, you know, first just, just breathing and doing some breath work and Creating then safe space. Yeah, like just touching your legs. And it's so perfect. And you've come into Rose Gold Goddesses mm-hmm. and taught us as well. And you know, all of the women that were in Rose Gold Goddesses and myself all experienced were like, we feel so amazing. Mm -hmm. Like even in 20 minutes, you know, just from taking that time for ourselves that even if it's not like self-pleasure doesn't mean even there's the yoni involved just from breathing and self-touch that I'm like, wow, they should have like drop-in studios of this, you know, like how we have yoga <laughs> yes, studios, meditation studios. We should have cycling. drop-in pleasure studios. Yes. You seeds, heard it here on the podcast seeds first. Planted. Seeds planted. Let's, yeah, seeds yeah. planted. They're going to yeah. be all over New York City. <laughs> I, I do events. I do pop-up events like this. It's like imagine in between like <laughs> meetings, you're like, I'm just going to go in for a, a pleasure like, practice, exactly. you know, and you come out and you're just like, oh, you're, you love everyone. It's so much Yeah, rich. and listen, I am, again, I'm also only a human and I have same, challenges and struggles as everyone in. And I'm also busy and traveling and jet lag and, you know, I'm like visiting here in LA without all my toys and tools, right? Although we just have to we show have our that little pleasure that altar here. Mobile we'll pleasure yeah. altar. 
But I even love to listen to my own meditations because when I am distracted or when I'm lazy uh, or, you know, all things happen, I'm stressed, then it helps me as well. So yeah, we all need that little accountability or a little guidance or motivation or inspiration. Yeah. So you guys can find that link in the show notes and she's doing a free one-on-one session <laughs> with everyone that signs up through the podcast. So be sure to use yeah. my link, my my code Sahara. You can find that in the show notes and you'll be able to join Ladder of Bliss. Yeah. I've done it and I'm I'm still going through the practices. Yeah. They're like something you want to hold on to forever. And she's going to be running it live at the end of June. And she she does these um, throughout the year. So be sure to join and get that session with her because yeah. I mean, there is no one better you can get <laughs> get a session with than her. I have, I have personally done it and it's like completely opened mm-hmm. up my worldview. So yeah. we love you so much, BB. Thank I you know. for coming and on so the podcast. So many women from this community has already, uh, have already been in my container. So thank you for opening that, you know, community and opportunity for me. And uh, yeah, that's how we get to co-create and support each other and rise together. So I'm so honored. Uh Oh, well, thank you so much for being here and sharing all your juicy (laughs) wisdom. I just feel, I feel like a five right now, just (laughs) hearing you talk. Mm, Yes. (laughs) So thank you for being on. Share this episode with anyone that you believe will (laughs) resonate in your stories. I mean, if you want to have, you know, better sex, better relationships, share this with the guy you're dating. Be like, I think you should listen to this. Share this with your friends. Share this with anyone. I think the world would be a better place if we all tune into our own pleasure-filled energy. And if you love this episode, you can leave a review for it in the iTunes store. And I will also send you my womb meditation, which is a meditation that allows you to tune into your womb's wisdom and ask her any questions that you have and receive her guidance because our womb spaces are not just pleasure, but it's also the hologram that creates all life. So you, when you're doing self-pleasure practices and when you're tuning into your womb, you're tuning into the energy that literally created humanity. So this meditation allows you to drop in and I'm sharing it free with anyone that leaves a review for this podcast. So again, head over to the podcast app, the Apple store, leave a review, take a screenshot and email it over to me at Sahara at IamSaharaRose.com. And you can find that link in the show notes. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I'll see you on the next one.